What's up, guys? How are we doing? Today, we are talking about Palaview's first stock report. Now, why is Palaview all of a sudden publishing stock reports? It's very simple. Palaview is focused on market research. So it's our goal to get you guys the best opportunities that we see in the marketplace, irrelevant of asset class or asset type. So up until this point, it's been pretty much all crypto because that's where we see the biggest upside. And so an example of a crypto report is the one that we published to our premium subscribers this past Monday. Okay, so that was it's Thursday now. And, thir and Monday represents this X. Okay, so as you can see, we had a nice result. But what do you do when you get those gains? When you capture those gains, right? What should you do? What, where should you put that money, right? And that's really what this report is about, this stock report. So we're going to just talk about the stock report a little bit, and I'm going to walk you through the thinking behind it, what this company is, and just like we're going to do a very high level overview of this report. And if you want to download this report, it's just for free in our Telegram. And if you want to see our Telegram, it's just in the description thing. Okay. So Brookfield Infrastructure Partners is a very interesting company. It owns this incredible array of portfolio of infrastructure assets that are classified as, um, well, as possessing this quality that you can call buyers of last resort, okay? So as you can see, it's extremely globalized. They own infrastructure assets where their customers are governments a lot of the time. So we're talking about transmission lines. Like you can see, they have 5,300 kilometers of transmission lines and 7.3 million electricity and gas connection stations, okay? So if you think about the scale of this business, right, and the quality of their customers in the form of governments, you'll start to realize that this, this company has no, no path of slowing down anytime soon, especially because the infrastructure fund business, the infrastructure development and portfolio management of infrastructure assets is actually a very monopolized sector of fund management, okay? We don't really need to get into details of how and why, but it's, it is just true, right? So when I say things like a buyer of last resort, right? What do I mean? I mean, I mean, like literally they don't have to depend on a consumer to purchase a lot of their, like the services that they offer, right? They literally are the last thing that people are going to pay for. If things go really badly, people, the last things that people are going to pay for are their Wi-Fi, their electricity bills, right? Their utilities. And that is what this whole business is built around, okay? And so what's really cool about a business like this is that it's built on compounding, right? And so if we talk about the structure of these reports, right, we follow a structure called, you know, what, why, so what? So that this is like a common structure in just persuasion thinking and persuasive writing, right? And not that we're trying to persuade you, but we're trying to show you guys how portfolio managers think, how investors think, because when you're a high quality investor, you are actually trying to persuade yourself or persuade out of an investment opportunity and persuade others to go along with this opportunity with you. So this is a company that is very interesting. It's a massive, it's a part of a massive, massive organization. And this infrastructure business is just part of it, okay? So we continue to look, like you can see, like the amount, like these are the percentages of like the, how do you say it? Like they own basically 21% of like the electricity grid in North America, right? It's pretty much what this is showing, okay? So they're, the staying power with a company like this, especially in the context of a company um, that pays a dividend, right? A healthy one at that. You can see that they have this really nice history, right? I mean, and look at these financials over the last five years. They were just sitting at a, just above like a $5 billion top line revenue. And five years later, they're well above 15, okay? 
This is the exact kind of business that you just want to, and you can see here in our when section when we typically have, um, you know, TGR do a little like entry exit analysis video. It's not really relevant for an opportunity like this, actually, when we kind of sit, take a step back and think about it, because you really on an asset like this, not that this is financial advice, but you want to enter whenever and hold forever. These dividend paying stocks have characteristics that just grow very nicely in time. And, you know, when you look at, you know, say their balance sheet, this is very, very healthy. And you want a business like this to be creatively leveraging debt because to creatively leverage debt, is to maximizing is to maximize compounding returns and compounding returns on assets like this are very very interesting. So let me so why is it very interesting? If you have say a a highway which these this company owns a lot of a big to, with toll roads like people are paying tolls right that means you have something that is called a predictive cash flow okay and the predictive cash flow is leverageable over time. So a bank will give you a loan against the value, loan to value, uh, against the, you know, where you can collateralize a piece of that asset so that you can capture some of that future value to invest and buy other assets, right? And so what's so interesting about a business like this also is, you know, if we go back to what I was saying earlier about the qualities of a business like this kind of being monopolistic, right? Where there are very few buyers that can actually go ahead and buy like say a bankrupt infrastructure asset. Like say if there's literally a highway, like to continue on the highway example, if there's a highway that is bankrupt, right? How many people can buy that highway, right? How many companies, how many funds, infrastructure funds? It's like four or five players on the planet, right? And if you're a government, you're going to want to like sell those assets that are in bankruptcy or even not in bankruptcy to people who are have a proven track record for operating those assets over long periods of time. So this company has a massive advantage when it comes to basically getting preferential treatment in these bankruptcy scenarios to be that purchaser of last resort on the infrastructure side because there's so low competition for people trying to buy these assets, right? So you can see that this is, you know, a history of their revenues, right? And their dividend yields. So if you were to, you know, just calculate this very roughly, this, co you know, this company's dividend is paying a 5.79% dividend yield, which is pretty good, like really, really good, especially for the health of this company. And if you're an investor, right, that puts like $10,000 worth and buys 10,000 worth of shares today, that's basically an annual income of $550 for you, right? So I want you to guys to start really getting intelligent, right, about, okay, well, I'm, like, I'm, I'm capturing these short-term gains, right, that aren't going to last forever. Crypto is not going to last forever, especially the alpha that we're experiencing in crypto right now. So we want to mature. And be like, okay, well, if I do, when and if I'm capturing these gains at Palaview or like, you know, these opportunities that Palaview is educating me on, then where do I park this stuff? Where do I just go and put it and forget about it, right? And so I'm not necessarily saying that this is a good opportunity for you. I have no idea who you are or what you're doing and, who, you know, who's watching this video, right? So I'm just saying that using the thinking that's outlined in this document will help you, right? Because what we're breaking down is what is the core value proposition of a business like this to an investor, right? We are highlighting where their revenue sources are coming from, right? And so for them, it's utilities like we spoke about. 41% of their total revenue comes from operating different utility assets, distribution lines, district heating, cooling systems, renewable power. They have a massive, like I think they actually have technically the largest renewable power portfolio on the planet. So transport, 28% of red, like, so they have, they own like literally railroads, guys, you know, energy data centers, these data centers that they built is a massive, massive part of their business. That's just going to be growing more and more. This 14%, it's about 14% of their total revenue right now. I imagine this will probably get closer to 20, 22% 
over the next five to 10 years um, based off of some of these things that are highlighted here. So this, these videos also are really good to watch. This is um, from Brookfield Infrastructure Partners Investor Day in 2022. And this is like a talk by their CEO. It's really good to watch these things if you're interested in, you know, because and this is what's nice about stocks in general. And like, especially like large cap stocks like this too, where they have shareholders, right? I'm like, let's see their shareholders. You see these shareholders that they have? I mean, these are massive institutions, right? These are their largest shareholders, right? Nine, Royal Bank of Canada owns 9.39%, right? doesn't really matter why, but and all that. But basically, you can see that these types of companies, obviously these banks, right? They have requirements, right? They have very serious requirements for what a business, you know, issues, right? And so they have, so that's why, this is a clunky way for me to say, researching stocks is inherently a lot easier than crypto, right? Because they have to file all of their financials. They have to, you know, reach certain ESG and transparency requirements, okay? So, yeah, that's kind of the thinking behind sharing and creating reports like this, guys, is to, you know, we're just going to, I think, continue sharing some of these stock ones for free. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we will talk more tomorrow. See you guys.